one of the easternmost states of the Indian Union, Nagaland, borders with Burma. It is surrounded by the states of Manipur, Assam and the Union Territory of Arunachal Pradesh on the other sides. Excepting a few hundred kilometers of plain tracts around Dimapur, valley beds and at the foot of some hills, the entire state of Nagaland is covered with mountain ranges and hills. Earlier, Naga society had managed every aspect of village life through selected council of elders. Right after its statehood in 1963, government of Nagaland had been establishing schools, health centers and conducting electrification in almost all the recognized villages of Nagaland. Over the years, although the public assets were mounting day by day, but there was a great distrust amongst the people about the functioning of government sectors. As it was unable to deliver what was required from it on the welfare front. There was a fatigue syndrome amongst people at large and particularly amongst the officials. There was also a growing mood of cynicism and negative feeling that nothing will work. The system was almost on the verge of collapsing. After intense discussions at different levels, the then Chief Secretary to Government of Nagaland came up with the idea of launching a program called Imagine Nagaland. After consultations at all levels, the program was launched in the year 2001. After intensive series of discussions, seminars and meetings at the levels of policy makers and bureaucrats, the Government of Nagaland took a radical step of democratizing welfare in favor of its citizens. The idea of communitization raised some doubts also, as some feared that the delegation of administrative and financial powers to the villagers might spoil them. The government decided to experiment with the program, keeping in view the distrust of the masses in its functioning and delegation of power to the community would make it answerable to the government the government can act as a watchdog of it. In January 2002, ordinance was cleared by the governor and in March 2002, it was smoothly cleared in the assembly by both the houses and now it was an act called Communitization of Public Institutions and Services in Nagaland 2002. Initially, three sectors were selected for the communitization program as it was felt that power, education and health constituted the most critical needs of the community and required considerable improvement. Consequent to the enactment of the legislation, sector-wise rules were promulgated and communitization of elementary schools and rural health sub-centers was initiated in the same year. Why not use a, a resource in the form of social capital which is so richly and abundantly available in Naga society, but we has not been used in running these institutions. So we thought we should transfer the ownership and the responsibility largely of management of these services and institutions to the people, to the user community and that is how the idea of communitization came. Communitization is centered around the triple T approach. The first T stands for trust. Trust the user community. Second T is to train them to discharge their newfound responsibilities. And the third T, transfer governmental powers and resources in respect of management. The program of communitization was started as pilot project. And after just one year of its implementation, government was thrilled to see stories of its positive impact. But this was not very easy. There were obstacles, challenges, difficulties and grudges amongst government employees at district levels because power was going out of their hands and they were supposed to be accountable in the future to the community whom they had taken for a ride earlier. This dissatisfaction amongst the government employees was the biggest challenge before the government. A very extensive training program was organized and it was not only a one-time training, but repeated trainings 
education sector, health sector and power sector, they had their separate training programs and without training well obviously the program would not succeed. From time to time we trained uh, village education committee members, zonal wise. Uh, you have gone through uh, the land and breadth of Nagaland, our roads are very bad. Even then we reach the people in the different zones and uh, educate them of how to implement this uh, communitization of our schools. Series of seminars and intensive workshops were conducted by the Administrative Training Institute, Nagaland, because the first and the most important step in the task to revitalize the government was to focus on changing the attitudes of people employed by the government. Series of initiatives were taken to revitalize the government, and one of the most important aspects of this strategy was to address the issue of transparency and accountability of government staff. A four-day workshop, Transparency and Accountability in Governance, was organized by the Department of Personnel and Administrative Reforms in November 2002. The only focus was on transparency in the government and how to make the administration citizen-centered Second major obstacle was of the untrained and uneducated villagers. As powers are transferred to community, the accountability and regularity of the government staff is required to be checked by the community. So until or unless they are trained or taught that way, the desired results can't be achieved. Series of workshops and interactions with the villagers in all corners of the state were done by the government in order to make them understand the real concept of communitization and their role in it. This encouraged their participation in the day-to-day -day affairs of the communitized sectors. One year had passed. It was time to check and evaluate the progress of communitization. The results were highly inspiring in both the sectors. Many positive changes were noticed but what encouraged the government to adopt the method to the power sector too was the active participation of the community. We started to work under the supervise of Dr. Antoli and then today we are doing our best to uplift this program. Government is giving sufficient staff and some more modern machines like uh, uh, what <laughs> computers and then some materials for fencing is we are getting and uh, some books also distributed to the children. We didn't have too much of a problem but uh, there was this fear of the unknown as how it will be implemented and that was largely satisfied and uh, catered to by these extensive training sessions that we organized in our offices as well as at the f in the field offices. So the uncertainty and the ambiguity about the whole program was eroded by these training sessions. Prior to communitization, new biases were created in favor of the private schools. These schools had better teachers and offered better quality education. There was one condition, however. Its portals were open to those who could pay. As a result, while the private schools served the needs of those who could pay, the poor had no option but to go to the public schools. The poor and the girl child thereby faced possible exclusion from the passage to modernity till rural elementary schools were brought under the umbrella of communitization. Actually, we implemented it, we made a beginning in 2002 with uh, 197 schools uh, in, and then subsequently in 2003, more schools having joined, bringing the total to 402 by 2003. And by 2004, all the schools had been brought under the ambit of communitization. After the uh, communitization of village schools, the urban area schools were also communitized. And as on date, all the schools in the state are communitized. Communitization of rural elementary education created a radically new option for the village community. 
As intended by the policy makers, it provided an opportunity and space for the community to revive and revitalize the human capital of the village community and provide access to the passage to modernity to the common Naga child. The communitization of rural elementary education thereby could play a dual role and function. On the one hand, it called upon the latent social capital of the village community to harness its energy and manage the school. On the other, under the stewardship of the community, the schools could stimulate the human capital of the children and renew future social capital of the village. It's been noticed that people have regained their faith in the government schools as a number of private school owners were forced to close down as people had started migrating their children back to the government schools. It's a real great experiment where tradition is blended with modernity which needs emulation. We expect that one more private school is likely to close down next year because they, are, they have no help. Here under Kubintai school we are giving them free textbook, teaching learning material, midday meal, all the facilities they are getting. Computer, fencing, midday meal, book, Napayas. The first impact of communitization of elementary education, immediately recognizable, is the increase in the enrollment rates of both boys and girls. This was seen in many villages of prominent districts we visited, like Dimapur, Kohima, Wokha, Mokokchung, Twainsang, Mon, Pek, and Zuneboto, etc. Passing rate of children increased from 75 to 100% in most of the villages and decrease in the school dropout rates. Availability of the books, increase in the attendance of the teachers, etc. had been seen in almost all the villages. Different regulations were promulgated for different sectors to achieve better results. Each and every affair of the school is managed by the Village Education Committee. These committees are empowered with adequate powers from the government. All school-related works, along with financial aspects, are taken care of by the community itself. One of the prominent parts of the delegated powers is to apply. No work, no pay. If any teacher is absent even for one day, the committee can deduct his or her salary as per the rules and regulations or can report to the higher authorities for any serious specific misconduct. From the point of conceptualization to transforming into actual reality, there was, there was a large amount of space and ground that we had to cover. What happened was that there were several rounds of discussions and brainstorming sessions which were held with the Directorate of School Education, the officers and the staff involved. And after these rounds of brainstorming and discussions, uh, meetings were held, several rounds of meetings were held with the concerned departments which included the finance and treasury accounts departments, the commercial banks, the accountant general's office because new rules and procedures had to be devised to implement this program. There was some uh, murmuring in my office and some objections were uh, voiced by uh, my officers and some staff that uh, this kind of deviation, this will be a major deviation from the set procedure and it may lead to uh, diversion of funds also for, uh, um, for, for the purpose for which the money is uh, meant. But uh, I said that uh, we let us look at the proposal and we should uh, suggest the safeguards uh, so that uh, such diversions is uh, prevented. Decentralization and delegation of powers to such committees have inculcated a sense of belongingness and ownership in the community. Community members voluntarily come forward to extend any possible help for the better education of their children who are the social capital of the future. Centuries old community tradition is revived. Although in most of the villages people feel funds given by the government to maintain schools, buying of books, furniture and for the infrastructural developments are less but they still manage with village development funds or by doing some collective farming and selling it.
but still these are not sufficient. Further increase in their annual grants will make a difference as most of the schools are running without even the basic facilities like toilet, pion, furniture. Most of the school buildings are in bad condition. These need to be repaired or rebuilt. In spite of some shortcomings, the communitization of education has been a major success in all corners of Nagaland. In the first national health policy in 1983, India committed herself to attaining the goal of health for all by 2000 by assuring comprehensive primary health care in every corner of the nation. During the last few years, India achieved high results in translating this policy into reality by recognizing the needs and requirements of its critical partner, namely the beneficiary community. But as far as the state of Nagaland is concerned, this necessary partner was left far behind during the last many years and little was done to involve, empower and actively engage it. Health services in the government-owned health sector, especially in the rural areas, were miserable. For various reasons, the healthcare services were not satisfactory. Low-quality drug supply was on the rise. Records were not maintained. Poor attendance of health workers was high. Private and indigenous practitioners were emerging like anything. The situation was quite hopeless till the communitization of public institutions and services in Nagaland became the law of the state. For the first time in the country, the communitization law created the space to radically change the current scenario. The primary health centers are looked after by the villages themselves and some of the staff, now staff attendance is much better. Medicines are available because it's a lump sum of amount is given and they buy the basic you know, medicines. These are not hospitals, these are, you know, to give some uh, medicine for relieving pain or, you know, first aid sort of uh, treatment is given. So, uh, we are trying to extend it to all other places and whatever problems are brought to a notice, we are trying to rectify them. Now, under this communitization, the gap has now narrowed down. Government pays salary to the government servant. But the responsibility has been given to the village health committee. Communitization aimed at erecting a new edifice of improved primary health care at the grassroots level on the bedrock of social capital latent in the village community. Health services in the communitized health center in the rural areas are now managed by VHCs, which are village health committees. The village health committee is composed of elected and selected members from the village council and village development board. The financial transactions are managed through community accounts which are jointly operated by the chairman and secretary of the committee. The salary to the health functionaries is distributed through VHCs. Most of the villagers confirmed that there is a drastic change after the communitization of health services in rural areas. Most of the officials from evaluation department confirmed that maintenance of record is better after communitization. Increased number of children utilizing health services had been recorded in most of the villages. Children accessing primary health care is 100% in most of the villages. Number of girl children receiving health care has increased. One of the most important things noticed is that growing number of patients coming to communitized health centers from private doctors and indigenous practitioners. Increase in the attendance of the health functionaries is 99 to 100 percent. Complaints of low quality drugs have reduced, if not eliminated completely. The third sector to be communitized in Nagaland after education and health is the power department. The idea to communitize electricity management in the villages signaled a major shift in the communitization experiment, moving away from the social sector to a much more complicated arena, the management of public utilities. Power department's willingness to come forward to decentralize electricity management through community empowerment is an indicative of the potential inherent in the communitization process which can be creatively adapted to any sector, 
be it the social sector services like education and health or public utilities like power distribution and management. When it comes to power, Nagaland, like many other states, particularly in Northeast, has been plagued by a significant resource gap in the energy sector. Total areas in revenue collection in the rural sector rose from 3 crore rupees in 1995 to 5 crore rupees by the year 2000. Consumers did not want to pay the bills. Power theft was the usual practice. Given the difficult terrain across the state and the fact that power department staff often operated in isolated conditions. Any attempt to disconnect power supply for non-payment of dues was a risky proposition, with the possibility of physical confrontation between defaulting consumers and the electricity department staff. The communitization program in the power department was launched in August 2003, initially in about 155 habitations. A high-powered committee recommended that the management of electricity revenue be entrusted to individual village councils through the adoption of single point metering. SPM is a system by which electricity is supplied to a village through a single source point covered by a single meter, thereby ensuring precise information about the quantum of energy supplied to the village. In turn, the power supply in the village is managed by VEMB or Village Electricity Management Board, which not only oversees energy distribution in the village, but also takes responsibility for recovery of electricity dues from individual residents of the village. After communitization of the power sector, the scenario was suddenly changed. The community started responding in a more responsible manner, and within a year's time of communitization, the results were amazingly encouraging and there was a great jump as far as the revenue collection is concerned. We are finding that uh, the end result is not too bad. The recoveries of tariff now has improved tremendously and the uh, payments made by the villagers which was otherwise not being made earlier, now they have started paying. So it's uh, in a sense an overall picture of positive development that's happening. Under the SPM program, VEMBs are given a 20% rebate for every unit of energy sold. With the installation of SPM, the department was in a position to exactly measure the power supplied to the village. But the absence of an objective and scientific billing system posed a serious threat to the fate of the communitization program. The power department evolved the concept of useful points as a way of getting over the problem of poor quality of meters supplied to individual consumers. A useful point is defined as the use of any electrical appliance which consumes up to 40 watts of electricity. Thus in houses without meters or with defective meters, the VEMBs calculate the total number of electrical appliances used and measuring the total wattage of all the appliances based on a chart provided in the rules. After the introduction of useful point method, sudden increase in the revenue was between 86 to 122 percent. One of the most significant impacts of the communitization process is the innovation of the Urban Electricity Management Board, introduced in the urban areas. To experiment with, this has been started in Dimapur and Kohima. The urban centers faced some difficulties. Contrary to the villages, where a clearly identifiable community resides. Urban pockets have people from different social and economic backgrounds and consists of many commercial enterprises and small industrial applications too. But when the residents of a locality are presented with an opportunity to manage resources as equal partners, the community itself learns to surmount the problems arising from different social origins the program of communitization in all the three sectors, like education, health and power, is quite successful in such a short time since its implementation. If we assess the overall success rate of communitization, it should be evaluated between 72% and 28%. 72% is the success rate, 
and rest of 28% should be achieved if the government takes serious note of some of the problems of the people managing the institutions at grassroots level. However, overall infrastructural improvements in all the sectors will further strengthen the process. But one of the major and important needs felt by the people at grassroots level is the introduction of some kind of financial incentive for the services rendered. One of the important aspects of communitization is that it's a people's movement which needs emulation everywhere. The success of communitization efforts in all the three sectors in Nagaland critically show that the goals of reform can be achieved not necessarily by the process of privatization but by the process of involving people in a comprehensive manner in the ownership, control and management of their own resources. The Nagaland experience demonstrates that where people are trusted with the ownership of public resources, they will not only act with a sense of responsibility and accountability, but will also find creative solutions to the many crises facing the functioning of our utilities. The experience of Nagaland can be experimented with in other states also. However, the characteristics of the social capital of any area or state might be different, but if used in a proper manner, the results can be as good as of Nagaland.